13-0. Consent calendar passes 13-0. Next, we will turn to item number 11, SB 476. Uh, Senator Mendoza, uh, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair and members. I'm here to present SB 476. I would like to begin by accepting the committee amendments uh, to address the policy comments on page five of the, of the analysis. The amendments clarify that day camps operate under the oversight of local health officers, clear up the language that provides exclusions and provides that health and sanitation shall be regulated by the local public uh, health officer. SB 476 improves safety standards have, for use day camps by requiring that the, the hold camps on. follow the same. Senator, hold on one second. Sure. We have a motion from Mr. Ridley Thomas, second from Mr. Santiago. Let me proceed. Thank you so much. Uh, Having seen the motions and not sure, I continue speaking, if that's okay? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I'll see any other authors or else I would. Yeah, yeah, please would, proceed. Please yeah. proceed. Uh, 476 uh, provides safety standards for youth day camps by requiring that the day, uh, camps follow the same standards that residential camps follow. Thousands of children at, attend camps throughout California. In the YMCA of Metropolitan Los Angeles alone, there are nearly 3,000 children who attend their camp annually. Under current law, programs that include multiple overnight stays are regulated as residential camps and must follow rigorous standards to ensure children's safety. However, many parents choose to send their children to local day camps instead, which are less costly than residential overnight camps and, ser and serve as an alternate, alternative for kids to participate in recreational activities and outdoor experiences. As before 76, will ensure that day camps meet the same standards as residential camps, including oversight by the local health departments and the local fire marshal. In addition, this bill requires that carbon monoxide detectors be installed in camp buildings. With me today to testify is Catherine Branken with the California Collaboration for Youth and Michelle Brankenier with the American Camp Association. Yes, Mr. Vice Chair, members, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Kathy Barankin, representing the California Collaboration for Youth. This bill had one simple purpose, and that is to find a home for day camps. Uh, the current definition, as Senator mentioned, of organized camps only includes resident camps. So this will put day camps, with their support and, and full backing, under the same kind of regulation that we have for resident camps. So we'll make sure that the folks who are running the programs have background checks. We'll make sure we have history checks, health history checks on the st students that attend those camps, and several other important features to secure the safety of our children in these camps. Uh, Michelle Brankenier with ACA is here to answer any questions and make a brief comment. Thank you. You members. Good afternoon. Thank you. Um, I work for the American Camp Association, I'm representing about 300 camps throughout California, um, and I ask for your support of this bill. Thank you. Further witnesses in support, name and organization only, please. Chris Lib Twombly, Executive Director for the California State Alliance of YMCA's, and strong support. Thank you. Mr. Chair Wobblers, I don't, I don't think there's any opposition. Okay. We just got some comments okay. to make. Yep, please. Just Malone for the Environmental Health Directors. We work closely with the health administrators. Firstly, I wanted to thank your staff for doing an outstanding job in working on these amendments. Uh, this is about four years in, in coming. And uh, we are the folks that actually do the authorization of the camps, the local environmental health, most of whom are under health agencies. And we just had two clarifications we'd like to do as we move the bill forward. First one is to ensure that the authorization that's granted by the local agencies can either be a permit or a registration. We don't want to feel, we don't want to have to do a full-on permit for a four-hour soccer camp. So the, the bill, the amendments that you took uh, do do that, but the rest of the bill needs to conform with that. So that's the first clarification. The second clarification is, in our opinion, the definition of day camp still is a little broad. Uh, we need to work on that. We don't want every single couple of hour, four hour, eight hour soccer camp to be uh, regulated as a day camp necessarily. So we understand that's a policy concern. It's also a fiscal concern. We'd like to work on those two issues as the bill moves forward. And thank you for indulgence. Thank you for the author and particularly your committee staff. Thank you. Any further witnesses? 
Judith Riegel with the County Health Executives Association. We weren't opposed unless amended, and we appreciate the amendment very much to uh, clarify the role of local health departments over day campuses, health, and sanitation. So that does remove our opposition. We do have st uh, still concerns regarding some of the operational issues that Mr. Milan just mentioned, and we'll continue to work with the authorities' office on those. Mr. Chair and members, Farrah McDade-Ting with the California State Association of Counties. I'd like to associate myself with um, the health executive's comments. We have removed our opposition. We appreciate the author and committee staff for working very hard on this bill, and we look forward to continuing to clarify it as it moves forward. Thank you. Thank you. Any other witnesses uh, in opposition? Seeing none, questions or comments from the committee? I think we already... Yeah, we, have, we have, do have a motion uh, and a second already. Uh, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, you may close. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, again, thank you for uh, for the staff working very closely with us, and I appreciate your time and appreciate an I vote. Thank you. Thank you. The motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Uh, I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Monta? Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla? Aye. Bonilla, aye. Burke? Aye. Burke, aye. Chavez? No. Chavez, no. Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Gomez? Gonzalez, Hernandez, Lackey, aye. Lackey, I, Nazarian, Patterson, Pat, Patterson not voting, Ridley Thomas, aye. Ridley Thomas, I, Rodriguez, Gomez, I, Rodriguez, Santiago, aye. Santiago, I, Steinorth, aye. Steinorth, no, Thurmond, Waldron, would? Aye. Would I? Your uh, the motion is nine to two. It is on call. Needs one more vote. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. Time. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Senator Hill. Item. Uh, fifteen. Item fifteen, SB six seventy one. And uh, Senator, do you have a support support? Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. I motion, like that. Motion from Ms. Benia, second from Mr. Wood. And I appreciate that. This has been a long and hard fight and, uh, and battle, and I appreciate the support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wit uh, witnesses in support? Here come. Be brief. We got the votes, so right. we're just... <laughs> Thank you. you. You may proceed. Good afternoon, members of the committee. My name is Jeffrey Ike. I'm an executive director at Amgen, one of the leading biotech companies in California. We're also a biosimilar sponsor, making a, over a billion dollar investment in the success of biosimilars. Strongly support SB 671 in part because California has to establish rules for substitution of biologic medicines when the FDA determines them interchangeable. Second, it's absolutely vital that patients and physicians have confidence in the use of biosimilar medicines and that when they do use these medicines, there's a complete and accurate patient medication history. We urge your I vote. Thank you. Jim Gross on behalf of the companies Merck, Johnson & Johnson, Novo Nordisk, and Genentech. The only thing I want to add is I thank Senator Hill for putting up with this for three years. Okay. Thank you very much. Further witnesses in support, name and organization only, please. Greg Herner on behalf of the California Life Sciences Association, which is a merger of the California Healthcare Institute and Bay Bio, in support of the bill. Thank you. Witnesses in support? Autumn Ogden on behalf of American Cancer Society, Cancer Action Network, also in support. Thank you. Dennis Sloper on behalf of Eli Lilly in support. David Ford for the Association of Northern California Oncologists and the Medical Oncology Association of Southern California in support. Mr. Chairman and members, John Valencia for AstraZeneca Pharmaceuticals in support of the bill. Dr. Nancy Lane on behalf of the California Rheumatology Alliance. The California Rheumatology Alliance supports the bill. 
Jennifer Snyder on behalf of the Biotechnology Industry Organization, National Bio, in support. Fred Main on behalf of the Generic Pharmaceuticals Association, in support. Good afternoon. Erin Norwood on behalf of Beringer Ingelheim, also in support. Natalie Cardenas on behalf of UCB, in support. Chris Rose on behalf of the Pharmaceutical Researchers and Manufacturers of America, Pharma, in support. Kristen Hare, Arthritis Foundation, in strong support. Any other witnesses in support? Witnesses in opposition? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Mr. Chair and members, apologies for being a little uh, late. Jeffrey Leacox, Greenberg Traurig, on behalf of Novartis Pharmaceuticals, Pharmaceuticals in support, and also uh, their sister company, Sandoz. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Louisus. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and members. Uh, Nick Louisus on behalf of the California Association of Health Plans. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank the author and his staff. Um, they must be commended for the amount of energy and work that went into uh, crafting amendments for this bill. Um, unfortunately, the California Association of Health Plans uh, does remain opposed. Um, for our trade association, our opposition to the notice requirements in the bill uh, was not um, uh, based on an operational issue. Um, it was primarily based on policy and principle. Uh, we agree with the FDA commissioner and the tenets of federal law that state that um, any, um, uh, there should not be any interference um, uh, in this area when interchangeability um, is determined um, by the FDA. So due to the fact that only one biosimilar is on the market and that we do not see any interchangeable biosimilars um, on the horizon as of yet, um, uh, we are opposed to any laws uh, on the basis that they are premature and could potentially undermine the trust in these cost-saving drugs um, once they are on the market. So um, for that reason, uh, we are respectively, uh, respectively <laughs> excuse me, uh, in opposition to the bill. Thank you very much. Stephanie Watkins, on behalf of the Association of California Life and Health Insurance Companies, I would just echo the comments of my colleague, and we are unfortunately still opposed to the bill. Thank you. Any other witnesses in opposition? Seeing none, uh, and just, Senator, for the record, uh, can you clarify that you are taking the uh, technical amendments from the committee? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, we are taking the amendments. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments from the committee? Mr. Ridley Thomas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Senator, uh, respect your work on this and other similarly uh, uh, situated. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't hear you. Just acknowledging your work on similar issues related to uh, pharmaceutical safety, consumers, the health care delivery system and efficiency. Certainly respect your role at the Business and Professions Committee. My concern is not unsimilar to what was mentioned by Ms. Luizos from the plans about consumer confusion. Can you speak to that point about the expectation that a consumer might have of certain um, uh, medicines and the, either the lack of what we see tangibly today that we can speak to uh, with biosimilars? Do you, can you opine on that or respond to uh, any of that? I, I can, and I think if uh, Jeff could probably do it, but I, I just, uh, we'll go, yes, maybe that'd be best. Go ahead. Thank, thank you for the question. I think the, the most important part of, uh, probably one of the most important parts of SB 671 is it makes very clear that under the new health care law and for biotechnology medicines, there are now going to be three types of medicines. There will be originator biologics, which have been on the market for some time. There will be biosimilars, which gives physicians, clinicians, the option to choose a particular medicine for a particular patient based on their disease state, based on their insurance coverage, so they have access to those medicines. And the third class of medicines are what are called interchangeable biologic medicines, and those the FDA will be determining are appropriate for substitution at the pharmacy level. So what this bill does is it actually creates great clarity where today there is almost none for consumers in California and says here are the three kinds of medicines that the FDA will be approving and here are how those medicines should be used. Do we know if those uh, of the three types, which medicines perform better with uh, very sick individuals? Well, so these are all used predominantly for individuals with grievous disease or a lifelong disorder, right? So these are all very sensitive patients. And all of the medicines, originator medicines, biosimilars, and interchangeable biologics, will be shown to be safe and effective. The question and what the FDA is evaluating along with us as we develop these medicines is how should they be used? And so what, the, what SB 671 does is it implements in California a, a framework that perfectly comports with what the FDA is evaluating and the data that we're generating to develop these medicines. And so what you'll see very quickly as these medicines come to market is that more patients will have access sooner to biologic medicines, and that's really the intent of the program. 
And is there an anticipated anything at the uh, FDA level that will make this more difficult to deploy or uh, be incongruent with respect? I know that you're trying to aim where they are now. I'm, I'm not as familiar with uh, this program or scheme. That's why I have concerns. No, this, this perfectly comports with both what the FDA is requiring of us as sponsors and what they are determining on a scientific review is appropriate for the medicine. So where the FDA says the medicine is a biosimilar, it's a choice for a patient's rheumatologist or oncologist. And where the biosimilar is determined to be interchangeable with another, then a pharmacy will be able to make a substitution based on what is the, the best option for that particular patient. And in the event that a particular medicine has a terrible failure rate or doesn't perform as well as the FDA and, and the a pharmaceutical manufacturer may have hoped, there's no difference in the recourse that a consumer has with respect if they feel as though they were injured or that it didn't, the biologic or the, the third, I, I can't, recall the terminology you use, but the third type of medicine that may not have performed as well. It's basically the same recourse that any patient would have or, or it's regimen. The same, it's the same recourse, but what SB 671 does is actually improve that level of reporting because what it does is it ensures that a patient, their pharmacist, and their physician all have shared information on the actual product in question that's in that patient's body at any one time. So this, this bill creates that shared understanding between the patient's health care team so that when those reporting uh, process that, you, that you're referring to, that it is able to be conducted with accurate information on the specific product the patient has received. So it actually improves that capability. Last question, Mr. Vice Chair. Do, do biologics uh, and biosimilars, if, if that's the correct term uh, in this bill, provide the potential for reduction in the medication that someone with chronic illness would have to, uh, reduction in the medical regimen and the pill regimen that someone would have to take who has a chronic disease? It, it will not. It's going to be the same dose, dosage form and strength as the medicines that are currently on the market today. Okay. It just simply provides physicians and patients with additional options and it creates much, much more competition than might exist today for some medicines. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Quick question, uh, Senator. Thank you for your work over a number of years. I almost feel badly I haven't been around to see yeah. uh, all the work you've I done. I had hair when we started this. And <laughs> I think they did too, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someday someone will uh, think of a drug to help out with that. Uh, my, I'm hoping. <laughs> it's potentially biosimilar. Um, my, my question, uh, as raised by the opposition, uh, I think we're all concerned about the rising costs of uh, a lot of these high-priced drugs, and some of the opposition has uh, suggested that this bill could lead to uh, additional costs that uh, would not be passed on to patients. Could you address that point? Or is there is there be additional costs that are passed on to the patient? This actually will reduce the cost. That's my sense as well, um, but if you could just... Yeah, Speak I mean, the, when you have a, I mean, if you use the example of, of generics, uh, generics have a have a reduced cost to for healthcare when generics are are substituted for the uh, the original product. In this particular case, when you have a uh, a biologic and then you have a similar a biosimilar that's created from that, it will be reduced cost, and that if that is uh, in, interchangeable, it. Uh, uh, it will uh, reduce the cost not as much as for a generic because of the complexity of these large molecule drugs and the development of those, but it will reduce the cost of the product at the end of the day. So this will reduce health care costs. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Seeing none. Uh, we do have a motion and a second. Senator, you may close. And, and thank you very much. I, I just wanted to respond to the opposition when they talked about the FDA's comments of interference, you know, no interference. Well, I, I can't see how notifying someone five days within five days after that's post dispensing of the product is interference. And secondly, we would want, this is, these are called interchangeable, these are called biosimilars. They're not called biosames. And there's a reason for that because they're similar. They're not exact. And because they're not exact, it's important to have a complete medical record of everything that is used in that. I respectfully ask for an I vote, members. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a motion and a second. I'd ask uh, it's due pass as amended to appropriations. I'd ask the clerk to please call the roll. Bonta? Mainshine? Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla? Aye. Bonilla, aye. Burke? Aye. Burke, aye. Chavez? Aye. Chavez, aye. Chu? Aye. Chu, aye. Gomez? Aye. Gomez, aye. Gonzalez? Hernandez? Lackey? 
Aye. Lackey, aye. Nazarian? Patterson? Patterson, aye. Ridley Thomas? Aye. Ridley Thomas, aye. Rodriguez? Hernandez, aye. Hernandez, aye. Santiago? Aye. Santiago, aye. Stein North? Aye. Stein North, aye. Thurmond? Waldron? Aye. Waldron, aye. Wood? Aye. Wood, aye. Fourteen zero motion passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, members. Thank Appreciate you. It. Next uh, is item number ten, SB four thirty five, Senator Pan. You may proceed. All right. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair and members, I present to you Senate Bill 435, which requires the Secretary of the California. We have a motion from Mr. Riley Thomas. All right. So briefly, uh, convene a work group. We have group. a second. Second. All right. We have a second from Mr. Chu. <laughs> okay. So we're going to just say again: requires the Secretary of the California Health and Human Services to convene a work group to identify appropriate payment methods to align incentives and in support of the patient-centered medical homes. Uh, amendments made in the Senate remove the bill's fiscal impact on the state. Uh, which would only be implemented enough non-state funding is received and uh, will save, will address increasing costs and shortages. And you know what? I have witnesses to testify in support. Thank you. Thank you. Witnesses in support. Jody Hicks, representing the California Academy of Family Physicians, and we are the sponsors. And I will be brief. I know it's a long afternoon. Um, we believe the state can play an important role in being a convener and bringing together public payers, private health carriers, third party purchasers um, to identify appropriate payment methods. And we think uh, that this bill allows the state to be a leader in this effort, and it's important for system reform, and we urge our I vote. Thank you. Beth Capel, on behalf of Health Access California, the point of a medical home is to make care better for consumers. We're pleased to be concluded in the measure. Thank you. Further witnesses in support, name and organization only. Chair and members, Sean South on behalf of the California Primary Care Association in support. Yeah. Any other witnesses in support? <laughs> Seeing none, witnesses in opposition. Seeing none, questions or comments from the committee? Yes, Ms. Vice Chair. Senator, um, the only question I have is uh, if, if, if you thought about making it a certain number for the work group and uh, kind of having specific individuals. I know that you say various stakeholders and you call them out in the bill but uh sometimes it's i've advised if, if you're going to have an advisory group to say you want five seven people and then put a time limit on when you work there when you would like their work to be completed i'm not proposing amendments mm -hmm. but i think that potentially we can get more out of this group and get a better product from the the agency and input from the secretary and a report back to us if we have a set number of people and a, and a window that we want to see in two, three, five years. That was just an idea when reviewing the bill that came to mind. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? Uh, Mr. Lackey. Yes. Yeah, if this is a study, why do we need to, or why are you requesting or asking for a federal antitrust exemption? Sure, and the, the analysis did a, a great job of pointing out um, the, stand, the thresholds that we have to meet in order to not be in violation of antitrust. So the idea is to get all of the payers together and talk about how to do payment reform, but it does get a little bit dicey when it comes to um, federal law and antitrust. So if the state is a convener and other states, there's 17 other states that have done this, it, um, they act as a leader and it clarifies that we're meeting the, the threshold to not be in violation for, of that law. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no further uh, comments. Uh, Senator, I kind of have the same uh, concerns I'm, I think the language is a little confusing. I'm not sure from a legal standpoint that saying your intent is to, what your intent is would somehow waive federal antitrust law. But having said that, um, so I think, you know, 
I, I'm, certainly I'm not a practicing attorney anymore. But I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure that that's a possibility to really do, and I think the feds would do what the feds are going to do on that. Um, so I do think the language is confusing. I'm not sure that how uh, kind of legally palatable that really is. But because this is a working group and your intent is to work out some of these issues um, and discuss that and try to work on solutions, uh, I will support it today. Um, but for, for what it's worth, some of that language may, may at some point um, – be problematic for you. Maybe not. Okay. Hopefully not. Okay. Um, with that, um, you may close. Well, thank you. And let me just clarify that point. Uh, I think what we're trying to say is that that's why we need the state to be the convener, right? Because as a government entity, you can bring in all different players, different stakeholders, including the plans that may collectively be a major part of the market share in the state. Because, and so to be sure that they can work together on payment issues related to healthcare delivery. And so that's the antitrust part. So we're not saying that we are as a state going to upend federal antitrust law as much as declaring that there shouldn't be an antitrust problem because it's being convened by the state, whereas the private payers couldn't get together themselves without state sponsorship because that would raise antitrust issues. And so hopefully that will clarify. Uh, that, that's really, I think, the point of the language there. And, and I would just uh, note that the patient center in Broca Home is something that is not just for the, uh, the public sector. This is also something for the private sector. In fact, many private sector uh, payers, such as IBM and others, have taken the lead in uh, implementing patient-centered medical home models uh, for their own population. So this is really an opportunity for California to bring people together, stakeholders, not just plans, but also others as well, uh, to take advantage of the opportunities to implement patient-centered medical home initiatives so that both private and federal pilot and demonstration projects, because there are some you know, privately funded ones as well, so that California can lead in cost-effective health, quality health care. So I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank, Thank you. you. We have a motion due pass to appropriations. Uh, we have a motion and a second. I ask the clerk to call roll. Bonta. Mainshine. Aye. Mainshine, aye. Bonilla. Burke. Aye. Burke, aye. Chavez. No. Chavez, no. Two. Aye. Two, aye. Gomez. Aye. Gomez, aye. Gonzalez. Hernandez? Aye. Hernandez, I lackey? No. Lackey, no. Nazarian? Patterson? No. Patterson, no. Ridley Thomas? Aye. Ridley Thomas, I. Rodriguez? Santiago? Aye. Santiago, I. Stein North? Stein North, no. Thurmond? Waldron? Aye. Waldron, I. Aye. Wood? Aye. Wood, I. Motion is nine to four, needs one more vote. It will be on call. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much.